Part 5, nothing fancy, going over my multi-day backpacking gear review extravaganza. Oh my goodness, it's laid all over the floor here. Uh, I've been going over all kinds of things. If you've happened upon this video accidentally, you're not interested in gear, you're in the wrong place. Uh, again, you can probably find a lot of videos of guys lighting their farts or whatnot there on YouTube. Other quality programming. But this is about gear, it's about backpacking, it's about tactical systems. Stuff that can save your life. According to my experiences, and that's all it is, a data point according to my experiences and how I've uh, perfected my system up to this point. Left off talking about whistles. Told you about the single mirror. I didn't tell you about this thing here. I have told you about it before because it was contained in my U.S. Air Force survival vest review. And that was a U actual U.S. Air Force survival vest. And I talked about the philosophy of the flare pin. This is not the cooler, much more effective variety of uh, gyrojet flare pin. This is the older version from the 60s. has a little uh, cup of singling material here, ignited by the primer, like I told you in a previous video. Sometimes I do take it with me. Uh, and I'll only take about this. This is a paintball tube that I have maybe five flare cups in there for singling. I have these out just to show you what they look like but I do not carry them loose. They are a pyrotechnic device and they deserve to be handled with respect like in a paintball tube. But I will ask myself, is it worth the weight? Like I do with everything I'm talking about. Is that flare pin worth the weight? Well, if I'm going into a very remote location, especially if I'm alone, the answer will generally be it's worth the weight because I can signal for my life. If I have a compound fracture of some sort, I have a signal mirror for daytime, have a whistle for audible signaling, and if I have my flare pin, I can signal at night and daytime if I have a helicopter looking for me. And that could be a real lifesaver. Now, technology is always marching on, it's always changing, and very soon the day will probably come when your GPS device, I'll cover that here in a second, might have a built-in GPS locator that transmits a signal or has the option to do so. Yes, I know there's devices that do that now. They usually require prescription service, subscription is what I meant to say, service. Yeah, I know they're out there and they're cool, but they're also uh, cost a lot of money and they add a lot of weight. So I, I'm not using them yet. So I might in the future, we'll see. But flare pin, uh, hard to find guys, sorry, uh, good luck finding them, they might be available somewhere. But if you go into very remote areas alone, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go out there. Especially if you Alaskan hunters, you go up in the bush there and you get dropped off by a piper cub and the guy comes and picks you up two weeks later. I have friends that hunt that way. Dude, there's no way I would go out without a, a flare gun of some sort. Yeah, I know there's not all kinds of air traffic flying over in remote parts of Alaska, but uh, nevertheless, it's an option. Um, this thing right here, by the way, what is that? By the way, that completes my signaling section. Not much there, just simple stuff. Very effective. This, we're going to get into other sections. This is needle and thread. Do not leave home without it. I had a backpack strap bust on me about eight miles in to some very rugged terrain, and what saved me is I had a needle with me. I also had a fishing rod with me. And on that fishing rod and reel, I had some monofilament. And what do you know, I also had a multi-tool, much like this one. And with those three items, the thread, or I'm sorry, the monofilament, the, the needle, and the small multi-tool, I was able to repair my pack strap and continue to backpack in. If I hadn't had that, I would have been a world of hurt. And yes, things can fail on your backpack. Had it happen, and uh, it's not fun. But if you're prepared with just simple things like this, You'll be glad you had it. Also, you can repair your clothing. You might have a, you know, a stitch bust out in your pants or something. And I don't know about you, but I don't take more than one pair of long pants with me in the backcountry. Too heavy. Needle and thread. Monofilament. What's this multi tool? I forgot to cover this. This is one I've used for fishing. It's a brand name is Mini Bear, something like that. I don't know if they still sell them. I've had this one for a number of years. Mini Bear Jaws. It's not a super high quality multi-tool, but the pliers work good enough uh, for extracting fish hooks out of fish, fish's mouths. And that's what I took it for. And it was the smallest and lightest weight one I could find. It has a couple other tools in there. I don't know, a knife blade, a nail file, chisel ground knife blade, by the way. hate those. 
Anyways, that's what that is. I have taken it before. I pretty much said no to multi-tools, but if you get them small, maybe a, a Leatherman squirt, which I have. I didn't show it here. Might be a good option, too. You need to ask yourself how much a plier, uh, what kind of plier capability would you need in the backcountry. Just depends. If you're making wildlife traps, you might need a lot. That takes us to the fire section. You saw my southeastern fire making videos. I'll have more in the future in different environments, different weather conditions. Stay tuned. They're coming. You'll dig them. Uh, and I'll talk a lot about the different philosophies and different levels of difficulty making a fire. And that speaks to the philosophy of the fire kit I'll bring in the backcountry. Now, it depends on where I'm going and if I can make a fire. In some areas, under high... Uh, high fire conditions or uh, high fire levels, they will forbid you from making a fire. In which case, I'll still bring this <laughs> because it's for an emergency. If I'm stranded, I have a compound fracture and it drops down to, I don't know, 30 degrees, 20 degrees at night, yeah, I want a fire. I don't care what the rules are. I need to save my life and always have a fire kit with you. Whether you actually make a fire or not is dependent upon those conditions, you know, the legalities, where you are, always use common sense too. I mean, don't catch the the, fi the forest on fire. That's not good. So what do I include in my fire kit? Well, you saw in my previous videos, fatwood, right? Fatwood is resin impregnated pine wood taken from the stumps of harvested pine trees. And it's an excellent fire making uh, tender. I mean, it's impregnated with resin, catches on fire easily. You do have to prep it with a knife like I showed you. The Roach Belly is perfect for that. Swiss Army Knife would be perfect for that. Even the S2 Juice has a blade that would be perfect for it. Uh, once you prep it into little toothpick style twigs, it just catches right on fire and there you go. Maybe two sticks of this size would be good for a five day trip. Maybe just one stick. Depends how you use it. It is a little bit on the heavy side though and that's why I will generally prefer this material bought from a very favorite website of mine, BrigadeQuartermaster.com. Love that place. They give military discount, by the way, for you military guys. And this is trioxane. It's a stove fuel designed for, there's a name right there, trioxane, designed for stoves, troops, heating up MREs and stuff. Uh, not MREs, actually have a self-heater, but maybe hot chocolate and, you know, coffee. But it's purple. I'm not going to break one open. It's purple. It's like a purple cake in there. One bar will last you a whole trip. Seal it well after you use it because it will evaporate on you. But once you light off trioxane, and again, you'll see this in future videos, man, does it burn. I mean, you can't even blow it out. Seriously, stuff rocks. It's the best fire-making material I've ever seen in my life. And you only need a little bit to make a fire. You could, you could bust this into five sections and make five fires out of it. I'll generally only bring one brick of this or one cake of it into the back country with me. I showed two here just by way of reference. Uh, I know there's other tenders that you can use. Maybe cot uh, Vaseline impregnated, cotton balls, those work well. Char cloth, some old timers like that. I understand that. They can work well. But do have something with you. Uh, it, makes, it saves you so much time if you have a nice fire starter along those lines. And yeah, I know there's some fire tablets too that you can start. Um, also, a great way to get your fire going are the REI Storm Proof Matches, and I really can't say enough good about these. These are, he hang on, i got to put this down. These are heavy-duty, windproof and waterproof matches by REI. Um, they, once you start them, they are, they're lifeboat matches. They just keep burning until the wood, at least the orange portion, is extinguished. They are a no-kidding, guaranteed way to get a flame in any kind of weather. Wet, dry, windy, doesn't matter. They'll strike right up. By the way, here's a warning on REI life -proof, or storm proof matches. They can also form a grenade. One year I put them in a match case just like this. I cut the sticks down to fit into a match case just like this. The match case dropped onto the floor and I had a little bit, let me unscrew this real quick had a little bit of sandpaper in the lid hmm, just like I have on this one and those lifeboat matches struck that sandpaper and exploded I kid you not it was like a grenade going off these will ignite big time so like you see now I put a cotton ball on that P 
piece of sandpaper I've glued to the top, and those are just regular household matches in there. Those are not stormproof REI matches, because uh, I'm a little scared about putting those in there, to be honest with you. Uh, little little safety warning from Nothing Fancy, stormproof matches by REI, they can make a grenade in your match case. So, But they are excellent fire starters, and I generally will take some with me when I go in the backcountry. Also, Flint and Steel, I showed you about this one in my southeastern fire making exercise. This is that uh, fire steel that I showed you. Light My Fire is the brand. Very nice. However, as light as it is, you can actually go lighter for Flint and Steel, and that would be along this variety. Forget the name brand of this. I bought it at Sportsman's Warehouse, but it has just a piece of flint on the top of it on an aluminum rod. And then it has like what looks to be a piece of a hacksaw blade. Uh, not quite as effective as Light My Fire Fire Steel, but it still works and it's very lightweight. And it has the advantage of coming with a very lightweight nylon pouch. So, uh, and also here's a lighter. I do take lighters. Never, ever, ever depend on a lighter to start a fire though. If this flint and this portion here gets in a high moisture condition or gets wet, uh, it will not ignite. You'll be doing this and you got no fire. However, for just quick uh, lighting of the stove, like I covered in a previous segment, it rocks. It's a great way to do it. It's pretty lightweight. I don't always take a lighter, but generally I do. Um, by the way, my battery's dying, so if I cut short, you'll know why. Um, so what do I take out of this? What's in my fire kit? It depends. If I'm going winter camping, I'll generally have stormproof matches. I'll have a light my fire flint or the smaller variety here. Maybe a waterproof container with some white tipped household mass matches, totally waterproof. I'll definitely have trioxane and I'll always have that with me. And then I'm able to really crank a fire off using my tools that I've talked to previously. That's the fire kit by Nut and Fancy. You'll see more videos, like I said, about that. Enough said. Let's go into first aid. A lot of philosophy to be said here. Uh, I'll just cover some of it. This is a very large first aid kit, by the way. And it's what I call a brigade level first aid kit. This is a Black Hawk tactical first aid kit. And do I take this in the backcountry with me? Uh, it depends. A lot of times I'll go in the backcountry with a large group. In other words, people that may or may not know a lot about backpacking and woods use and yeah I'll take a brigade level first aid kit with me with heavy duty blood stoppers, ace bandages, full size scissors, disinfectants, cotton balls, uh, suture kit, eye wash, hydrogen peroxide but guess what I don't carry it <laughs> I make them carry it um, but when you have a large group with you and I say maybe five individuals or more I highly recommend you have a brigade size first aid kit with you, especially if you're doing stuff like I've shown you, using sharp edge devices where someone might cut themselves like really bad and they're bleeding up there. You, you want to have a brigade style kit with you. If there's interest, yes, I may show you what I put in my first aid kit. Yet another project to do. But um, there's a lot of people who know more about first aid than I do. However, I can hold my own and have stitched up a lot of people as years have gone by. If I'm not in a large group, I do not take a first aid kit this large and this capable. However, by doing so, I take upon myself more risk. And what do I mean? Well, I don't have as many capabilities when I go to this size first aid kit. I don't have the blood stopping capability. This is more nicks, bruises, small cuts, a couple Tylenol, disinfectants, band-aids, in there. This is not one of my own. I do make my own smaller kits that are much more complete than this one. This one is actually, what is it? Uh, that's the brand Adventure Medical Kits. They do a pretty good job putting it together. Uh, it's relatively small, compact. I really like the carry case they use. REI Campmore sells these and you can buy them. And you definitely want to go in the backcountry with something. You don't want to just go in there with nothing because almost always you'll have someone in your party that's going to get a cr cut hurt, bruised. And again, if I'm in a big party, brigade level first aid kit comes with. Sometimes I'll even take a space blanket with me and that's even if I have the the sleeping bag. Sorry, had a mental block. 
uh, the sleeping bags with me. A space blanket is actually nice because someone gets shock uh, and they're wet. Let's say they fell into that cold, cold water I was telling you about, and you rescue them out, and they're in the, the depths of hypothermia. You throw them in your bag. Oh, and by the way, you brought a down bag with you. Huh, I'll talk about that in another segment. But that down bag, once it gets wet, it loses its insulation properties. Yeah, space bag would be nice. I'm going to throw them in a space bag, get their body reflection coming back to them, and then I'll put them in hopefully a synthetic bag, which I'll show you in the next segment, and get them warming up. Space blanket, very nice to have. The Thermalite bags, space bag, not so much a blanket, but it's actually a, a complete uh, a sleeping bag variety that you climb in are the best. Woo! What is this? Part four I just got done with. Part five coming at you. Hey, we're making progress. We went over the tools, the water, food, some clothing items. Uh, coming up, you're going to be talked a little bit about the backpack. That'll be a separate review.